Welcome in our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning, Rob. A very good day or a very bad day, depending upon your political leanings. Interesting. 50-50 you went on that one yeah, there, 50-50, Bill. 50-50, yes. Yeah, we, because we, I we, have Mike Hyde on one side and Kevin Knowles on the other side. <laughs> Speaking of Mike Hyde, the Badger of the Sarge, Delegate Michael Hyde. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How can it be a bad day when you're sitting beside me, Bill? <laughs> On top of that, he should be the highlight of his day. The highlight of the day. Highlight of the week. His, his the seat yeah. is like four feet higher today from those bags of cash he's earned over the last two days with these market gains. It has been a good day. A good week. <laughs> yeah, man. Our uh, guest in this segment is the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Knowlesy, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, and everybody. Good to have you here. It is a pleasure to be here today. It's always a pleasure to have you in the you room. You guys are always great to get together with. I can hear the enthusiasm in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Just bleeding I, through. I my arms go up like, whoa. <laughs> Where are we going today? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like a roller coaster ride in here. Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know which dip I'm going to get into. You never. Or which dip I'm talking to. It's all love, though, Kevin. All no, love. I know that. I know that. Bill. At times. There's yeah. a lot of history in this room. Well, there's a lot of history, at least there's at one end of, of the table. <laughs> a lot of history. Living personally, history right there. History, yeah, we're talking about history and age. Uh, Mike Height joined us yesterday for our breakfast club. And Mike, what was your line when you walked in the room? Yeah, uh, Reduced the average age by 10 years when I walked in there. <laughs> just, and well, then he went on from there making it sound yeah. older and older and older. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, that's a privilege. Yeah, wow. yeah. Not everybody gets wow. invited to that. Program. I was I was greeted with Hey, you know what? I know Rob. I was right? I was greeted with Hey, young fella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear that very often. I like it. Yeah, and the way he talked about our age, he may not be invited back. Rob, <laughs> <laughs> it may have been a one shot deal. <laughs> sounds like it to me. Hey, blood. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it to me. Uh, Kevin, I understand you had an interesting election day experience. Uh, I did. I did. It was uh, actually it was a little bit disappointing mm-hmm. just to start the, the the election process for my wife and I off we uh, we went into our, our precinct and we we uh, our voting station is at the high school and you know I went in there and uh, I got my ballot and I, I come out of the, the after I went through the ballot and I said to someone I said that I got the wrong ballot and they said no you didn't I said well I, I know I got the wrong ballot there's there was someone different uh, uh, representing uh, my district for uh, delegate, and uh, I and I knew for a fact because I I follow it, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had who was on your ballot? Uh, I had uh, DeSoto. Who was supposed to be on your ballot? Uh, Lisa White, and uh, th- she wasn't, and he was, and so when when I left, uh, through that concern, I, I, I made a phone call. Uh, first, I guess the first person I called was was Mike actually, and, and Mike Height, yeah, Mike Height, good friend of mine. You know, you call a good friend. You know, they say you got a friend on the line. That's my friend on the line, right? <laughs> well, he made a suggestion. Call Tony Petrucci. I called. I called down, down there, and, and Tony said, "Well, thank you. Let me check on it." Got back to me, and uh, he said that DeSoto was, uh, was the was my delegate. And I said, thank you, but I'm going to take this a little bit further just to make sure to to find out. And I, I started making phone calls to the state and some other representatives, and uh, some were confused about it, some weren't. So there was a, a back-and-forth thing, and finally, uh, through the Secretary of State's office, it was verified that my, my ballot was wrong. So every ballot in Precinct uh, 19, as I know it, uh, had the wrong delegate on it. So they didn't have an opportunity to vote for the delegate in their in the in their seat and uh so um to to tony's credit too tony called me up uh the day after and apologized he said he he checked in it, into it more and he says that it was that way and that uh, uh he apologized that that it happened and i said well, what's the process now and, and they said well if it's a uh, if it's a close race then uh then then it'd be a problem if not it's it's not it's not an issue well for me, it is an issue because I, I didn't get a, an opportunity to vo- uh, place my vote, and, and and my other concern would be if if that's if that's one, what about was there any others that that might have been uh, uh, not right? You mm-hmm. know? So, you know, my wife and I were a little bit disappointed, but uh, you know what, the outcomes you know, clearly show that uh, it wouldn't have made a, a difference one way or the other, and uh, just the opportunity for us to place our vote was the. Uh, 
was the, the issue that we had. Any yeah. idea how many people go through Precinct 19? For I, I, I have no idea, but I would imagine that it's uh, hundreds plus, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it appeared to be a smaller precinct because there was only one voting station for it, so uh, I, I couldn't tell you the number exact, but it, it was so there had to be over 100 people. Is that, is that Orchard View? No, that's uh, that is um, Martinsburg High School. Martinsburg High School, okay. So uh, were all the rest of the names on the ballot correct as far as you know? Yes, yeah. I spoke with Tony. We had Tony on the show Wednesday morning. I spoke with Tony a couple different times on Tuesday once this issue became known. And it traces back, my understanding, Mike Height, is to the redrawing of the lines with the most recent census and the mapping. And when Tony first checked on it, he had said it's correct because according to the records they had of who goes where, that's where the person was. In this particular case, Lisa White, who uh, was supposed to be in your district, was not Joe DeSoto was because the map in the clerk's office showed that it was Joe DeSoto. However, the map was incorrect. Now, why it was incorrect, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if that falls on the, the state secretary of state's office or on the Berkeley County Clerk's office. And my understanding in communicating with the secretary of state's office is they're investigating that to look in how the mapping error occurred. Bill? Yeah, uh, Tony made that comment the other day, and I had and I kind of challenged on it. If this was the first election after the redistricting, after the map was drawn, you would could accept that. But this is a third election. Well, let's ask, when you voted in the primary, Kevin, who was on your ballot as a delegate, Lisa White or Joe DeSoto? Uh, I'm a Democrat, so I didn't have them on my yeah. on my ballot. Oh, well, that would be true. But I, it did not surface in the primary. It did not surface last general. Well, it did not surface because nobody reported it. Was it correct oh, in the primary I, or was I it can, incorrect? I cannot imagine somebody... Is when others are not as astute as Kevin. People follow these elections, and I just think it was unique to this particular election. I could be wrong, but I think it's unique to this election. Well, so did that means did anybody else map. note it, Kevin, and, and comment to you? Because when we interviewed Lisa White, she wasn't aware of it until Mike Hornby told her that at the Morrissey function that night. And when we had Joe DeSoto on the next morning, he wasn't even aware of it until I told him. So I'm I'm curious... Uh, were the ballots incorrect in the primary too? And did anybody else besides you notice that the ballot you had was incorrect with the delegate on it that you had this for the general? Oh well, yeah, keep in mind too that precinct 19 is probably a smaller precinct uh, mm -hmm. uh, from because because we were when that was redistricted. I mean, there's I think there's only four blocks that that in my neighborhood that go into that uh, into that district. So a, a very small piece of the city. Uh, is in uh, Lisa White's district at mm -hmm. this point. But, Rob, you've raised a, a more interesting question. If it had been a larger number, what course of action would could have been taken the state uh, secretary of state's office take we had the same situation in mingo county in the journal in the primary election where several where a candidate was left off the ballot uh i think in this case it may have been a i don't know a republican or democrat but left literally left off the ballot they used the same rationale it was not enough people to make a difference well I, or it was a mistake you're you're absolutely correct and i, I think that's what the key is that both of those particular individuals won by so much yeah. that that sort of got them off the hook but it doesn't excuse the fact that it happened to begin with and um you know I, i'm i'm i don't sing praises very often but kevin um I, i'm going to sing some praise here right now because you did your research um, like a good voter should you knew who was supposed to be uh on your ballot you knew who your delegate was, you knew who it, who the new delegate should have been, um, and you knew going in who you were going to vote for, and and more voters need to do that, and and hold uh, our officials accountable when they get it wrong. Um, and and Kevin, as far as I know, is the only person out of that precinct that said anything. And he came out of the booth and, and called me right away and said, I. I think this is wrong. And and I told him right away, absolutely it's wrong. There's no way you're in on in 
that particular district. The one that's represented by Don Forst right now, that's the whole southern end of the county. You're nowhere near his dis district. Um, and that's when I suggested, you know, you need to call Tony because this could become a problem and this needs to be addressed now to make sure it's not more precincts other than Kevin's. So kudos to you for, for pointing it out and knowing who's supposed to be on your ballot. So uh, I want to have a good day be. for you, Kevin. The badger is singing your praise. Hey, you know. Well, I got, I, it wasn't just me, Mike. You better say my wife, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure. Or we're off. Or we're my both guess gonna, is. We're my both going to get off. To. My guess is Dana pointed it out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, this is wrong. Just like you are all the time. <laughs> I, I got a text that said they still have not, to my knowledge, sent new voter registration cards to the whole 400 home subdivision of the gallery after changing our polling place in the primary. So there's another issue there that needs straightened out, apparently, according to the text I just got. I'll leave the person's name out of it. Uh, but I don't know if they have contacted the clerk's office directly or not, but there's a note of it right there, 400 home subdivision without the... Uh, appropriate uh, cards. Go ahead, but next time Secretary of State's on, it'd be a very interesting question to ask. What is a protocol if this these two mistakes repeat yes. themselves? Do they do another hold another election, which has its own problems, or what, how do they address it? Now, if, before the obvious question arises, which is Rob, why haven't you invited somebody from the Sec Secretary of State's office on to address this? The answer is, of course, that I have. Yeah. They're not ready to address it because they don't have all the information yet. And the last thing they want to do is be on this show speculating. They but, want the facts first. But they have the Mingo County that they could address. And again, They're Mingo with, County is a very similar situation. But dealing with that and then 30,000 votes in Charleston that yeah. they had issues with. Yeah. There, there were a lot of issues in this general in terms of Berkeley County had a hell of a time getting their votes uploaded. That didn't happen until around 10 o'clock. Uh, according to Gary Wine, they tried to start feeding at 830 there were some software issues between yeah. the Secretary of State's office and Berkeley County that didn't get rectified because I was texting with Gary after 10. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed here. I got to know, yeah. you know, at some point along the way. And I think it was 1020 when I exchanged my last text to Gary, in which he said the upload is there. The vote should now be up on the site. So, And someone said, maybe in the breakfast group yesterday, Mike, it was part of that was due to the severe uh, position on the yeah. ballot, which yes. is something we never we have not used in the county for years. And nobody ran for that office, nobody correct? Nobody ran for the office. And that yeah, was it was a, shown was an error when they yeah. tried to put a ballot in because there was no surveyor on yeah. the ballot. Yeah. Um, it was shown an error. So once they corrected that, then the error went away. The field must be occupied. Yeah, the field must be occupied. Yeah. Um, Kevin, uh, city offices are closed on Monday. That's correct. Yeah. And the Veterans Day Parade is this weekend. It is. Uh, so I believe it starts at 11 o'clock uh, mm -hmm. on Saturday. And uh, the gathering spot is, I believe, the Judicial Center. Here, here. Here's the flyer. Go ahead and take the notes. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, you, you're a you're better reader than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I have my glasses on, I can actually see. Yeah, it's, uh, so uh, 10 o'clock, the lineup starts, and they'll line up at the Berkeley County Judicial Center on West South. The parade begins at 11. You must pre-register for the parade, so you better do so quickly with Kathleen Stotler today at 304-620-7786. After the parade, there's a reception for all veterans and parade participants at the Martinsburg VFW at 241 North Queen Street. Get it to, done. Yeah, tonight they have uh, what really kicks off, at least in downtown Martinsburg, the the holiday season is uh, the uh, they're going to unveil the windows at uh, uh, the down on the square. Oh, and by the way, Mike uh, Hornby just chimed in on our comment section that we will record the parade and play it back on Monday, as long as they don't charge us two thousand dollars to record the parade. <laughs> <laughs> and and I assume we record they play it back uh, instead of you and I and uh, John Gilstrap. We're kind of cast to the side and we'll no, we're on Monday. We're on. You it, could take the it, day up because you're a veteran, though. Yeah. They won't play it during the show. That's they'll, what I thought they might. They'll yeah. probably play it during the evening or something. That would be my guess. Yes. Yeah. I suspect a lot of people prefer to be played during the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think a lot of us do get played during the show. <laughs> You may be right about that. Too. <laughs> hey, do you, you have another meeting this Thursday coming up, City Council meeting? We, we do. Uh, actually, it's going to be our first 
city council meeting in the uh, uh, in, down in the new city hall. So we're excited about that. We've been back in city hall now uh, about two weeks, uh, working out the kinks from uh, the the renovation that we did and. Uh, Wonderful uh, job that the, the the people that were doing the renovations have done to this point, and we're we're very happy to one be back downtown, two to be almost done with this project because it, it's a, it was a big under undertaking. So it's a hundred percent moved in. One hundred percent moved in. So if you have any any bills or any questions, we're right down in the old uh, uh, back in the original city hall in downtown. Yeah. What do you notice about the more uh, the efficiencies of the uh, new new digs now? Well, of course, I mean, uh, everything is all updated as far as uh, electronics and, and uh, your, your computers and, and all the systems and everything. Uh, more space to move around. Keep in mind that that's where the police, police headquarters used to be on the first floor, and uh, we all have, we're all cramped in on the second floor, and, and now we're able to spread out and do, do business more conducive with space that we have. Yeah. Well, that's good. So congratulations on that. Thank you. What's on your agenda for the simple meeting on Thursday? Well, on, on one of the items is uh, downtown parking for the holiday. Uh, we're, we're putting on the agenda free parking on the streets for King and Queen Streets. Uh, so you won't have to. Starting when and through when? Uh, I believe it starts the 29th. Is that Black Friday somewhere around there? Yeah. And I think to June 2nd. June or I'm January? Sorry. January second. January second. Please, January second. <laughs> Is that a done deal? <laughs> no, it's not. It has to be voted on. It's on the agenda. Okay. It's a recommendation from myself and and uh, an ask from uh, Main Street and some other businesses downtown. It's been done before, uh, and uh, that doesn't mean that we're you know the, the the meter parking in the parking lots are going to remain, but the street parking will be um, uh, free for those that want to come down and do a quick in and out, whatever they need to do. Yeah. And it's and it's our hopes that it's not the employees that are taking up these parking spots. But that's been the benefit or the value of the of the meter parking on the street, is it not? To keep yeah, it, it, to, to keep it off. But there's yeah. been a, a push uh, last year after the fact uh, about um, having the ability to uh, uh, have free parking for for the businesses in front for the holiday. So we're going to give it a shot. Uh, we're going to evaluate it. Uh, if there's issues and problems, yeah, we're going to take a look at that and it may or may not be well, first of all it may or may not be something the council wants uh, but I, I would think that the council would would be in a positive direction for this and uh, um, we'll evaluate if it's something that that's not going to work then you know that's next year what would, what would be the loss in revenue for that that month you know i i couldn't tell you that to be quite honest can't I, be that I, much, I know though. that i know that it was uh, uh that was brought up and and uh, my point was that hey you know what we need to give back a little bit to the, the downtown and and this is what this little well bit not just get back but encourage people to come downtown right. and use those particular shops and and vendors that you have downtown yeah. as well so yeah. that's a good idea in, in my opinion it's yeah. pretty inexpensive to park at those meters so it can't it, be it that is. much if you revenue. compare it anywhere else it, it is oh it's, yeah it's a quarter for an hour and uh you know, and, but unless you pay on the app, then it's a little bit more to pay on the app. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you go through Ticketmaster, it's like four hundred dollars for that minute for that hour. Where's that? If you go through Ticketmaster, it's like <laughs> after the fees, it's like four hundred dollars for that hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a Ticketmaster joke. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, didn't land. Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it fell flat in your office. If you haven't bought anything through Ticketmaster, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. I, I know now. After it took me five minutes to catch up to that. Point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me. <laughs> I need a brick wall behind me. <laughs> An audience with no fresh vegetables. Yeah. All right. So uh, Shenandoah Hotel, are there people moving, uh, living in it? Is it like completely refurbished and people have moved oh, in? Oh, that's, that's been. Right. Uh, yeah, that, so that, where do they park? They have parking in the back. Yeah, they have parking in the back. They, have, can, can they, they can all be accommodated? There's no there's no spillover as far as you know, or no complaints about. I, I've you know? not had any complaints about the uh, parking for the Shenandoah residents. Okay, and and then the new place uh, right across from the Mission. What's that called again? That is uh, you're talking about the the mill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is the percentage of occupation there now in completion? Any idea? I, I want to say it's one quarter. Uh, there's about a hundred people that are moved in, and it's, it's set to be about four hundred. So one quarter, and they they have they they have a whole parking lot in the back. Uh, and in the front, so they're 
they're well set for that. It's only it's only a quarter of the way, though. But are you beginning to see any activity from those residents in town? Is anything noticeable? Well, I mean, I, I would say, I would say yes. But uh, you know, I, I don't own a business in town, mm -hmm. in the downtown, to to see whether that was an impact or not. But I think as you get closer to the next phase and you get up to that two hundred person mark, then. Uh, you know, those are things that are going to they're going to happen. Now, there's supposed to be a restaurant inside of that facility. There is. is is it open yet? No, uh, that that is. Uh, I don't know where they're at with uh, attaining someone to, to take that over, uh, but that's part of that uh, second phase, I believe. Okay, Kevin, there's been fairly significant renovations between the Shenandoah Hotel and the Mill. Is there something else in the pipeline is that you uh, you foresee? Yes, uh, the, the city owns uh, the market house, and the market house houses the um, Habanero, and we've come to a uh, public and private partnership with uh, Wishnet that uh, had did the Shenandoah, uh, and they're going to be refurbishing that whole building here in the next next year or so They're for residents as well as no uh, it's it, it's it's definitely not for residents it's going to be uh housing some businesses and, and some offices all right so don't let that awkward silence stop you guys from asking questions while i was busy having to take care of something <laughs> by all means don't cover for me or anything like that <laughs> two words woodbury avenue woodbury avenue yeah what do you what do you know about the latest here well i i can tell you that's a pilot program uh, it's, it's, it's always been, it's something that, uh, that a, uh, councilman in that area had come to, to the city and said that they needed some help. So, uh, instead of spending millions and millions of dollars on something that may or may not work, we're doing a pilot program. This is part of the pilot. Mm -hmm. We will evaluate that, can evaluate it over a three month period. So, uh, you know, we're looking at possibly six months to a year, take a look at the pluses and minuses. And then at that point, if we need to make some tweaks or uh, overhauls, we, we will do that. But keep in mind, it's a pilot pro, uh, project to, to ease the traffic. I can tell you, the traffic has been eased. I mean, there was 15,000 cars a day going up and down Woodbury. That seems extraordinary. That's a, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of vehicles going through a neighborhood. And I, for the first time, I had an opportunity to go all the way up it. Uh, just to check it out. Uh, in fact, I was at uh, some fights, some boxing matches at the rec center Friday night, and uh, and I, you could tell how the traffic was much much calmer than than it was before all that stuff was there. Are you getting any neighborhood feedback at the changes yet, positive or well, negative? Well, I, I mean, th we did have some uh, feedback about uh, placement of mailboxes. We tried to work with the uh, post office, which really didn't. We didn't get much. Uh, much help there because uh, some of those boxes are uh, it's on a rural route that so they don't get out of their vehicle to deliver the mail they just ride by and put it in a, a mailbox so uh, we had to move some of the delineators that are in the road and to maybe make it easier for that traffic flow for for the mail for the u.s mail when do you start to get some data to analyze well i would uh, i would imagine uh, uh this is just Myself speaking, and I would imagine that uh, after three months, we we take a look at it, six months, take a look at it, and then kind of evaluate it as it goes on. And we're not seeing anything terrible at this point. You're getting the same responses that uh, when you put a roundabout in, the people, you know, have a lot to say, and then all of a sudden it starts dissipating. So sure. uh, we're starting to see a little bit the same way here, but uh, it's not. Again, it's a, it's a pilot. Uh, it's not the end all, finish all. It's uh, something that we need to take a look at and is work there, on that area. Is an option of putting a, a full roundabout in that place, in that site? I have not heard any. Roundabout. Because the roundabout gives the flexibility of going in both directions. Yeah. And what you have now, you can only go one direction. Yeah, I, I think putting a roundabout on uh, Queen Street there is a, a, tough, a tough, if that's what you're talking about. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I, that would be a tough. When you, when you talk about gathering data to, out of to make that evaluation, oh. you can't do it. See they, all that silence wow. that they had. Yeah. Now they now they see. Yeah. Now they're now they're awake. Rob, Good to see you. Rob saved Good you. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs>